Nej, det er tænkt, at det er opvandt, simpelthen. Så der er vigtigt, at du Så jeg på en night. Jeg var om en motorway, om en night. I needed so much balls, I didn't need 10, but they were like, spotted them, I needed them like that to get them. So they come around back, and it goes on the motorway. Full moon! <laughs> Full moon in a police helicopter! Oh shit! Yeah, anyway, never mind that. <laughs> Even my dog had to come and fight her, because she was black. Yeah, right. But, on the underwood, you know, the ancient laws from, from from medievalism, you can have a stick if you can cut it and catch it. And it's so, all like the underwood, these timbers that are young and fast and easy for people to cut with no tools, really. You know, you don't need a chainsaw, do you? You can have a little axe. You know, me and my mate, when we were about 10, we thought, right, we've got, we've got these axes, we've got to chop a tree down, haven't we? It took us three nights. <laughs> We'll chop it down, we'll pretend it to a camp, you know. Right. Yeah. If I told you his name, he'd be in trouble now, but he's a tree officer at a ball and push. <laughs> no, he's not, it's a joke. Alright, so I'll come back to tell you about wood, I think. I started at the very beginning, when my dad came home from pit, with two bundles wrapped up in newspaper, very, very neat, with the same piece of string every day. One piece had a piece of coal in it, and the other had a bit of a pit prop. And that coal would have burned in it, it would have been one. And he'd only ever fetch one that were interesting to me. It had full of fossils, and it were a tree, really. Yeah. An old, bloody, what they call them, monkey puzzle wood, yeah. which was a wooden but they would made a coal, and a put it on. Near fire on a bit of paper than that, and marbled at it, and then he smashed it up with a hammer and we burned it. But the. Oh, what one of them there? But the. Um, what's it called? The, the wood. We kindled it up, you know, into the book England. It, it was a piece that you could make party pieces out of. And that was when I first learned a little bit of woodworking then. And, and um, then I seen my uncle on the plains, and I'm like, oh, this is. Look at that. Couldn't stop thinking about wood and many things. Watching technological advancements in our little gang. <laughs> you know the bogies, which you yeah. had to get yeah. super cross tram wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, you had to wait for you had to wait ages for baby go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, them bogies, you made them more or less with nails. You know, you're not nailed together, but you had to make two holes. Yeah. That's it, I know. And how well, did we do it? We did it. We did it with, <laughs> with, 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 with poker and fire. No, we didn't want to say that. Because we had a little fire in fact, with an old wreck, whatever you call them, you know, yeah. bomb sites where we played on, in demolition yards. I've always had a fire. You know? always had a fire. And, and you had a few hangings in fire. Because, you know, you took everybody fetched a poker and you could poke the hole. And, it, and, get, and that was our technology. We made axes out of slate. And because we were maniac boys. But the holes. At Christmas that year, I got on our ten, I got the brace and bait to make holes with. Gosh. Oh, how much are homes? They must be in each, then. <laughs> All that money worked by. But then we got onto Kindling. Kindling. And in Farmer, then, everybody, there were loads of women who were widows of pit men. You know, the men had died in the pit, and the widows were, had pit rights, and they didn't get free coal. And they fetched the coal for them, and, and there were some women in our street, two or two down, back in our, they were full of coal. And then the coal man would come and say, Have you not got enough coal? He said, Madam, for the husband's been done pit, died for this coal, and I don't want it in lieu of gas and electric. You can bugger off, I'm having coal, right? So all them I served them with kindling in a pram, right? <laughs> I don't know if it was probably eight, eight, eight in the heat, or two seats or something, but it was, it was chilling, right? You know, and it worked. But then I, I delivered some. 
deliver some to the roads, and it said, when you take a, a bramble of corn to that lady next week but one, because she's not a pig with it, she has no corn. So I would be my time over ten dollars to light all each. <laughs> and and then uh, and kindling supplies. Oh wow, guess what? Guess what happened then? Gosh. Albert Road Farm with me, Penn Street, straight up as it was, and to Naxford came. Aye. And all those lads said to Anton Naxford, we men. This is our gang, we live here, and we are the people for you. You know, we're the lads who you want to hire to enter that with what's your mum doing, unloading 3 b 2s off a wagon from Liverpool. And you know, like, we can do that and get 10 ball. Which then gave us the right to pick through this pile of off cuts. <laughs> I mean, big guns go. <laughs> you know, big guns, they're big elastic, you can't get them. Ah, sure, so that's that with Axford. And before, well, before Axford come and fetching imported timber from Liverpool cheap, the only, there were nobody else in Bangladesh selling the, the timber except for its demolition yards. You know, the, and if you wanted any wood, you wouldn't put it demolition yard, you'd just put a bloody knock down house and pull it pull wood off yourself. You could buy a second hand timber from yards with. Well, you could have it at half price if, 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 if you prefer to pull nails out yourself. Or you could get a job there pulling nails out. <laughs> Dirtiest, blackest, solidest job. Ain't it? That's what it is. And the uses of it. And still now, you know, I've belonged to many projects of um, community projects for a long time. And we're always we're trying as much as we can to use big business is waste. You know, we'll take all scrap. I mean, it's funny stuff in it, scrap wood. It's not really scrap, is it? It's never, even that last little tiny pigs, like that, which I can easily turn into five quid now. Isn't it, man? But when you see skipfuls of it, it's all nice. I mean, we'll away a project and farm them. All sorts of wood comes there from all directions. And, and the, initiative and the tools and the people. To see when you stand with if you talk about wood, you you, can, you can't not talk about tools. Because the, the, the more tools you've got, the more things you can do. And you add to your tool kit one at a time. You know, like well, what what's holding me back? What oh I need a saw. You know, then you add on to them. And what the ones you've got, you're moving and keep them, and then you build a kit up. You know, and then some, you know, there's all, that old thing of the ancient, the old retired men would have a box of tools to an apprentice coming in. You know, because it, how can an apprentice go to buy with the tools? But like the use of tools with wood, myself, I spend all my life. It's absolutely therapeutic. It's my craft, it's like joy, it's like art, it's um, and if you're feeling really shit and you do some woodwork, like me anyway, I'm, I'm out of it then. I'm just in the, in the dream of wood, playing with the tools. And then you get on to, so that's, you know, I've got hazel. Hazel's all up and down here, everywhere, isn't it? We've been, me and Chris Wood, I've been walking with a few around here. Me and you've been jungling, haven't we? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's, um, the harvest, you know, it, it is a harvest, and, it, uh, and it's husbandry as well. When you go to a hazel tree, you don't just steal its, um, the magic sticks off it and leave the awful ones, you do annual trimming. You know, if you go and there's two branches touching each other, the wind will make both of them die because it'll rub its back off. So you, you have to decide which one to take and leave them and which one to leave. So that big, you know, the husbandry of it is looking after that thing, what's looking after you. What time of year do you do all that? 
Well, it's it's a funny one. Well, can it be all through the year? Well, it's strange. It's some, the, the craziest one ever happened to me. I mean, it's April, if you go, said to you, first of October to end of March. You know, that's written in the book. Yeah. But, you, I mean, I think 20 years ago, the, the hazel in Bolton were in leaf at Christmas Eve. Yeah. And they probably dropped hmm, January 1st. They were down only for two weeks. And they popped up again middle of January. It's had a three week a three a three week window of cutting opportunity really that year. Because I mean it, it, it's you're not supposed to cut it with leaf on. Because it, it takes it's yeah. lovely this back down in my yeah. and it's not dormant. And if and if you cut like if you cut a tree in summer, it, it will be sappy and sugary and, and it'll be Extremely wet, it will shrink a lot and it, and it will be prone to to rot and attack some of grown stuff because it's sugary. Winter is um, so, really, it's winter when you cut them. And then, trees? if they have a good sorry, is that for all trees? Um, well, the whole the um. Yes, yes, I think so. I would say I, think so I don't. I, what I, what I, I don't do much. I don't tend to to play the conifers much, um, and uh, uh, they're a sort. They're a different uh, uh, branch of trees, aren't they? I'm sort of uh, deciduous hardwood trees, and conifers. Uh, they're softwood, aren't they? And, I, and they, they, they play different. I, I think maybe I, they might put them in somewhere, I don't know. But it's, um, they, they're doing things in somewhere, aren't they, the trees? They're living their life. You know, they're doing like having flowers and making nuts and things and berries and all that, and ash keys. You have to let them do all that. Yeah. And once, once they've done that, you know, they, they, once they've made their they've done the business of dropping all their seeds, then the, the leaves change and they go to sleep. Yeah. Because they feed the, feed the animals, don't they, well, yeah. in the summer? Yeah, all around. And then they, they come, yes. They put in the garden, yeah, no, all the insect life. They feed them to seed and so the uh, Another thing is, it's, if you're taking the tree down with back, with, with, in leaf, it, yeah. it's an awful job. You like all these leaves <laughs> that mess about with them. <laughs> And you know, so like in, in, all the little top branches will make it, it you know, if you, in the woods you chop one down, the people make little habitat piles out of the tiny twigs, what look like firewood, you know, for beetles and stuff like that to play. But it's always a winter job. And the seasonality of it, of what is it, you know, what do you do, Wood, woodcraft wise, from medieval history, it's, it's every month's got a thing. You know, every month's got a thing. Um, I, I mean, I do start cutting it sycamore in February. The sap rising just, and then that's that's for spoon making. Sycamore's cut very early. It really comes early. Sycamore ash comes late. Hazel comes a bit after that. There's good wild cherry all over these valley as well, and. Um, I think this is this one here. This is wild cherry. Look, the legs. It always has a nice reddish tinge to it, and it, it splits lovely and nice. And not side of seven feet away, up near church on this side. Um, that big church, you know, parish church. There's lovely wild cherry there. I'll give you that one. <laughs> <laughs> And now we also provide camouflage suits <laughs> <laughs> and silent chainsaws. Have you seen silent chainsaws? Go on, buy me. Have you seen them? Go on, look at them. Yes, they're the jumbo. But yes, they're the electric chainsaws. Put them in your rucksack. You can see them in your hand. Perfect, isn't it? This. This. History. This is history now. That was geography and, and biology. This is, this is history now. Three-legged. 
I bet you would feel like it, wouldn't you? Glory to my new Christine Keel. <laughs> <laughs> no, everything would feel like it. Who knows why? Come on, hands up. Thank you very much, yes. Cut like a bilking stool on, on cobbles. If it had four legs, it'd wobble all the time, wouldn't it? For every to wobble. Three never wobbles. <coughs> Everything was three legged. And. Very simple legs. Put in at an angle. For stability. Square stuff didn't exist like for a long time. Well, three leggedness was the thing. If you look at um, Oxford English Dictionary and look up the word cricket, that's one. It's a, side, a fireside three legged milking stool is a cricket. And it was called that for years a three legged cricket. That's the first simple thing you make on a bodging course for me. And it's, there's Tony there. You've gone forth and multiplied, haven't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. He has. He's showing them up right now, aren't you? All the multiplied. <laughs> excellent, excellent. But the simplest thing is, um, you know, what you do, this leg, and this leg, and this leg. They all lived in the same log ones. And that log would have been about that fat. And you split it into six pieces, like a birthday cake. And um, um, when you split it into six pieces, like a birthday cake, it has to be round. And the middle has to be in the middle. You might sound daft at that, you know. You know, I mean, the middle in the middle. Do you know what I mean by that? Well, you know when you see a, a tree like that, the end, and it's got rings, and the bullseye is where it put a baby, and it goes one year bigger every year, doesn't it? That's that, and you can count the rings when that's the first thing you saw a child in when you're chopping a tree up. And then the middle is in the middle if the tree grows straight up. And, and if you get a lot of trees all going straight up together, they can't, they, they go straight up. They don't even put side branches out, they just want to chase the light. But if you've got a tree that were growing against the wall, and it only had sun on one side of it, the middle would be nowhere in the middle. It would be right there. So, so when you split it, it would be weird. So when you're splitting for bodging, which is this, which is the ancient green method, the tree has to be round, and, and the middle has to be in the middle. And then you just crack it open with relax and mallet, go in and out, and then you split it into six. And you've got six little triangles then, like cake slices. Knock the corners off with an axe, you've got an X of them. This is all very fast work because it's as soft as a carrot. Then we shave it with tools. You can see pictures of all these. Shave it with tools on the shave moss, and then they ground. And they're matching. And you've got millions of them. Because you can't stop doing it, because it's so <laughs> You've been going away, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hands up who's ever been carried away. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're all going to need to hide. Yes, well, you got carried away with it, didn't you? Know? What you have to do then is make this end here spit in an all. Right. And you know, you, you generally have only the moles are always the same size. And the smaller you can make that hole, the better your work will be. Not that, I mean, you can't go daft, but if, if you use very, 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 very strong, straight grain wood here, you can let the end piece be very small and, and, and not of small diameter. If this was soft awful wood, the, the, the bit that was in the chair, which I call the spigot, it'd have to be fat, because it's not strong. But because this is strong, that can be thin. And if you were in the olden days, making an awl, 
Every eight of an inch bigger you go, it's twice as much work. And you bloody know it, don't you? Oh, yeah. So, small wall, strong wood, that's the game. And ash is the strongest wood in the world. Two or pods. Folks. It's not. <laughs> I thought it was oak. Ah, okay then. Ash is the strongest wood in the world. No. Weight for weight. <laughs> Weight for weight, you know, when you compare the weight of the material against the weight of oak, um, ash will don't do oak weight for weight. Right. And uh, you know, I mean, I've been doing like old crap for those years, I've made chairs. See how little tiny chair there? <coughs> little tiny spindles on the back of that. Big strong men said to me, that would be too thin, then they won't break. I'd say, hey, you've got a bond then. Be a great one. <laughs> I'll give them a longer, nice thing, like a snooker chip, like a snooker cube. Peel out of ash, stick it with your finger, little finger. Be a break here. Like that. No. 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 Big strong man. I said, I said, I said, you won't break it. It can't snap. It's a green stick. It will fracture. You can probably tie in a knot, but you can't snap it. And they're all watching by then, this big strong man trying to win. They're all saying, they're infernal. I'm quite improved. Then my little lad's a nine year old. I said, it's what I might do it. And I'll give him one. And he'd just like that, snap it now. That was sick of more. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have a laugh though, don't you? You learn to entertain, it's end to it. But sick of more. The grain on an axe. If, there, this is, if this were fresh and green, I mean, the, the, the thing with bodging, you can't do it in summer. I can't go and get a fresh bog to show, demonstrate to you this. But if you pull the a fibre off it, it'll go all the way to the end, like a string. In that string, you can turn it, run your finger, you can wrap things up with it. But sick of, and the fibres, the length of the tree, the, the top to bottom. But with sick of the fibres are an eighth of an inch long. That's all we have to just do, 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 do. So, if you make me turn sycamore sycamore wood, which is bloody lovely, it's as white as milk. It's underestimated, isn't it, really, as a tree? Like an invasive weed that drops sap on you, posh cars, paintwork. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of um, insect life on it for birds and that. And it's amazing wood to play with. If you get it one, it's not. When they're massive and big and all branchy, there's not much we meat can do with them. But the, the underwood stuff, you know, stuff that fat, it's um, an absolute pleasure to cut. And often you do you 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 weed in someone's verge by cutting it, and there again it can walk up again. And it's um, it, you know this there's a big thing going on now, spoon making. It's 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 in vogue for. Greenwood people, it's therapeutic, and they make spoons, and that's sycamore. And it, when you when you make a spoon at a fresh sycamore, what you only cut this morning, you make the spoon this afternoon. It's there again. It's soft as cheese, but it's like soft cheese. You know, it really is a nice thing to play with. Sycamore rolling pins, anything to do with the dairy. It is white as milk, and it's um, pure of. Um, Food and touch of your lip, it's got not hurt you. And it's got what them things call antiseptic about it. It fights off bacteria, on so chopping boards in your kitchen. And you know the butter churns, so everything in the barrel making cooperin for beer is whole, but everything for milk and dairy is sycamore. Mm. It gets to this, don't we? Cricket. Yeah. Right then, and that word was going on for many centuries, but the game of cricket wasn't. And this was, this came from the, the, the war countries, from his weavers. We went in this, and it's all out of that. It's all out of one lock, that top. So you've got to lock this bit, the mash, this top. Pack it up, special, in your tricky way, and then 
that you get one of them, and then that is out of this, you get two of them. And then you get two of them as well as another one, and then you put that in half and you get them. And then you get one of these, two of them. but they feel like it, and they are the them. And they become a, I don't know if you've ever, you the Bruegel, the painter, the artist. My God, he was a photographer of his period. He, 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 his paintings were historically exact. All the cutlery and knives, you've seen his paintings, Bruegel. He paints these all the time. And he's such a painter. He even paints this the little wooden pegs. And this is copied from the Bruegel painting. But it's sea lightning for that reason. And this is the night watchman's stool. Or sometimes, it would, if there were 12 of them, there'd be a cockfighting set. And there'd be tavern things. And one bright spark, one day, 14th century, 15th century, fetched a pair of a mountain, made, made a ball out of leather, and invented the game of cricket. We called it cricket because it was already a cricket. And they invented that. Three leggedness. Yeah? How come they changed for straight legs? How come it, it changed for square? From three to four for straight legs. Yes. I'll tell you what happened there. Technological advancement of the tooling. Mm -hmm. um, saws became a thing. Right. The ancient craftsmen would have, you could build, you can build this without a saw. You don't need a saw for this. But if you were cutting square work, a saw would be really, really helpful. Slow going, but technological advancement through Europe of steel and steel making and cutting, and um, there would be saws that would be able to cut trees up into square pieces. You can make, I mean, prior to that, you could make square timber with the axe easy too. That's not, it's not difficult at all. But the, the, the thing about the three legged dish was there were no flat surfaces in any house at all. Not really, unless you were very posh. And therefore, what happened next then was a big thing is a big table, you know, refectory table, there's the Lord of the Manor and his, and his family, and, his, and they were sitting on benches in line. At the top of the table, they fetch in a big stone flag that were flat. And even if it weren't flat, they'd fit the four-legged thing to that. The head of the table, the chairman, you know, the man in the chair, at the top of the table, on the flat stone, so his feet aren't getting wet from bloody mud coming up. And everybody else is on cobbles. So the evolution of the four-legged chair in England is down to that chairman up there. And I think I studied a lot of 15th century, 14th century, 16th century stuff. There were a hell of a lot of keeping up with the Joneses. You know, I took it as chair. I want what we wore bubbles on. I want it. Boom. When this came from the Low Countries to England, within 10 years, they then started turning on, bobbing, turning, extreme bobbing, turning, right? because they wanted it fancier than him. And the, the word for turning, you know, the pole lay turning, and you can make lathes in the woods, medieval people did it all the time, it worked into the 1950s. Turning was called th throwing. Like pot pottery is called throwing, I think. <laughs> you throw a pot. Yeah. Well, pottery was a big thing in England, much later. But wood turning, came after pottery. So when people saw people doing wood turning, they said, oh, you're throwing it. He's throwing a leg. And, to throw, and then the past, what, the, 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 it, it would be then turned, this chair has, is a, has been thrown. And the word would come to mean a throne, which the Queen sits on, don't she? And really what the first word of uh, the, the, the describes a throne, a throne chair. What they were spoken of, and they were four legged and bobbing up like crazy with all these turnings. Four legged, 
And they've still got golf rounds now, don't they? Big fancy chairs. Mm. Remember that one in um, Man and Sam? Yes. There were what some king, somebody sat on it before the church and had a one, didn't they? I hope that was a dumb to me. Oh, yeah, this is, this is a very similar thing. Mm-hmm. Very similar thing. Uh, that one, the man inside, has got some little funny arms. Mm-hmm. But uh, the evolution of the whole uh, nature of the remake came from this. What happened was they keep these two rings at the front, but they extended them up a bit, and then they could bring arms here. But arms to here, but then they oh, it's too tight now. So what they did, they put two back legs in. Like that, one here, one here, leave that one out. And it was, then, but it was trapezoid in shape. So what, the four leg of it on from this by, by trying to fit arms to it. And if you go tell me all of Burnley, our carpets are for 10 years ago. There is loads of them on shore. And one of them I made it, and it's a replica. But there's a massive show of them at Tell Me All of the things. I don't, I don't know if we have them in all this wood or certain tower or like that, the wood big around, but t- tell me all sort of great collection of these things. Anyway, you know where cricket started now, and how to make history. You know, I'll tell you about the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like, what do you want to die then? Hazel. Both of these are a bonus. And we were in a gang in the Hazel Woods. Anyone who finds one of them, you have to show Brucey very loud and bring it to me. Poggy sticks. Poggy sticks. I'll tell you what it is. That, now that is the soft cell and that's the hard cell. They both, they both make chilling and they both stick to just about when you're wandering about. Or, you know, I've got special missions to get these. So you put that on stall, and then somebody comes along, looks at it, then they pick it up, and you look at it like this, and then you go. As soon as they've done that, you've gone. I think yours. <laughs> Honest. And you know what's next? They won't put it down. No price on it. Never. <laughs> you have to work it on. <laughs> See what kind of shoes he got on. <laughs> yeah. They can't put it down. Uh, how much is this, Pam? I say. You know, if I sell you that, I'm going to deprive you of two hours of wonderful pleasure. <laughs> you know? I said, well, imagine the pleasure you get when you find your own stick. You'll be hours in the woods looking for it. It might take you two weeks, but when you find it, you know it's there and it's yours and you've found it. I can tell you I've got two weeks to burn this fellow. So then I'll say, I'll say, I'll tell you what. And I said, as well, you missed a bit of carbon to make it. You know, you don't just want to buy one, make your own. Well, I've obviously got too much money. I said, at the dinner, I said, no, no, I can't, I really am depriving you. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll sell you one of these that haven't got elastic on. And I'll sell you a bit of elastic, and if you get your own leather, best out of tongue with an old shoe. Oh. Do you want to sell it to me or not? Uh, I said, well, you know, we've been through all the, you know, you can't look at the other one. How much is it? 25 quid. Then they pay you. They pay you. The hard sell. Little Johnny. It's always little Johnny. There's little Johnny with his family. And he's got a stick. He's been in woods with his family, he's got a stick. And he gets his stick, 
and he walks past my stall where my wonderful high quality varnish sticks are, which have been sterilized. And I say, ooh, you would get germs off that lad. I mean, you go blind and you die, probably. <laughs> <laughs> and we go, oh, I see them. It's just for germs, isn't it? Why don't you have this? <laughs> and save the goods on his life. <laughs> you know you want to, do <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and then the, the next thing you say is, do you want his name right, you know? In, in magic pen. <laughs> this is the thing, you've got a magic pen, a magic fire pen, that writes names on. These are good little kachin, but you have to pretend anybody's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't give it. Honestly, you wouldn't go mother girl and say, have you got any sticks? What, a dog pissed on? <laughs> <laughs> would you? You wouldn't go there for that. <laughs> You've got your reputable dealer. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> and they're only two. You've saved your child's life for four pounds people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a good thing. <laughs> Things are better then. You get to these. These are nice little bruises. You have to have these. You know, I'm a bit big in my mind. Right eye for your eyes. Put your binoculars on. <laughs> and they don't wobble. And you can close curtains with them. <laughs> what? Come on. Lift a bit taller. Wash in line. Isn't it? Them's in the woods. <laughs> I have to do that at all in my living room, door to space. Because I can't get to the window because I'm building a camera. I've tapped into it. I started a little project building a camera. And it went a little bad. I thought, well, I'll just it's a bunch of living room a bit with it. Next thing you know, it's sort of all living room from. Ten foot long and then six foot wide. And I've made a full book bed and I'm living in it. <laughs> Not with upstairs for a month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the crack, isn't it? The uses of wood. Right then, so I've got past ten year old. I'm alright at woodwork then. What were we making? Out of reclaimed timber. You know, it's black dirty wood. Bird aviaries. Rabbit hutches, all the stuff, you know, what you made. If you, posh people who had to chew up two down houses like us, with tin back on back, you built a lean to. You know what I mean? A nice little lean to, with, and you got the glass out of the old sliding sash windows, still in sash, before they broke them. You didn't buy glass, nobody bought nothing. And you know that, philo that philosophy stuck with me on the line. Don't buy now. Buying wood. <laughs> <laughs> I remember then, an extra 12, because like 11, because the man of grammar school, because in woodwork class, walks in. Ah, 12 benches. Two boys per bench, no girls. They were making cakes then. That, that's how long ago that was. They were good cakes, though, when you see them. But in all the 12 tools on wall of everything. A technician sharpened them. Fast tracking us on woodwork. Fantastic, we already liked it, you know. I thought I had mine, know what I want to do. All my life is this. And then, next thing, make a table. A, a mahogany coffee table. Still got it. But I have to get, like, I don't know if it was four and nine pence or six and two pence or five and eleven. It was a hard load of money though to buy the mockery when I was eleven. And last week I, I studied the mockery market prices again last week and bloody hell. <coughs> Crikey. But it's, it's outrageously against the world's nature, isn't it, to be bringing mahogany trees from around the town's backyards and fetching them to England and chopping them all up. And, and then, 
Remember them old bloody doors, what used to come from Malaysia in the 1980s? Hard wood doors, you know, made out of old second cousin twice removed from an African tree. African wood doors, Mal Malaysian doors, wrapped up in a plastic bag. We used to come to Barnwick or Bolton or Lancashire or anywhere wet. As soon as you got into a plastic bag, they'd swell. So, you, so the first thing you have to do is cut bloody sides off them and like, when you're hanging on. And then you say to the person, don't forget to paint them when it'll swell. It'll swell. They should have, they, what they should have done with them doors is give you a pair of sash clamps with them. But keep bloody bringing them back. And they were gold joints and blue were made in somewhere else and they just had bits. But the bloody ones were amazing stuff. But they were all in pieces. They were in skips everywhere. When you got one and you could cut it up and you get loads of pieces, you did get loads of pieces. I cut two up only a month ago and my caravan has got some of that in. Yeah, I'm not spent out on that, yeah. <laughs> but see these are big dead on beans. Damn. There's about 40 of them in an old front door. Isn't it amazing? Recyclable usage. And you know you go to that tip at Race Lane. I've been to have been working. Before that there was another one you could you could I used to go tip and you used to take all your rubbish and throw it away and then you take somebody else's rubbish all the yeah. better than your rubbish. <laughs> really? That's what it was, isn't it? And then later it come like you have to throw it over a wall and you, the only way you could get to the back of the stick with a new car. And then remember if you had to you know but now it's even worse and everything's horrible, isn't it? And then when you get to that Picking door, and you've got a machine like Willow Air Project, the, the machine shop there, and the men they've got there, they can easily cut a door up into 40 pieces. And then, you know, the, that, that's Margaret, two by one, two inch by one inch. That now is, it's a five quick piece of wood. I know. Bloody bananas. Timber's gone up from Christmas, 30%. It's up in 30 percent a lot of money, isn't it? So that's why I've always shied away from buying wood. And so that, you know, 11 year old, my mum said, you know, four and nine pence for a bit of rock. And I said, ah, but it's a coffee table now. And it is a good one, I still have it. Well, like 60 years later, 50 odd years later, still having the same mad conversation. How much is more and why do we put in it? It's a funny old world, isn't it? How it's gone like this. And then you get to this nice place where young modern people are doing this. <laughs> that is it, really, isn't it now? You know, the, look at the nice planning and decoration and colour scheme. And, and it's possibly, it, it, it's like a broken palace, isn't it? You know, but just some bit to bar. And that, using your art and craft and not your wallet. Anybody can go around buying things and you can get another big do all this stuff for you. Where will, shall we go next? What went on with? Ah, this is one. Marketing. This is my marketing, my bits. The culture. Made me a lot of money this, actually, really, really, really. I turned into a record with these. <laughs> You have to do some time in your life, don't you? Everybody needs to be in the board at least once. Right, repetitivism. You know, making one thing. You make one thing, it takes you lots of time. But if you make a dozen, it's like, well, on Monday morning, I'll cut 12 seats out. On Monday afternoon, I'll shave the asses out. <laughs> and these sticks, you've made them, on, on, you'll be making them while you're on your demonstration. And I made the bit, it's a, it's a baby's first chair. And it's very reminiscent of like an elderly person in a care home who has to have a special chair to get up. Well, little tiny toddlers who can't walk need that too. But my children, all of them, have, st have stepped out of this chair and toddled the first. Because it's, it's a launch pad. And the little fingers go on here. The little thing is one there. 
and he just pop up and chuck it along and it works, it actually works. And you have to get them in before they can walk. So I, I've got these little crap birds, I've been crap birds sprouting up, sat in somebody everywhere. These got looked at a lot and people would say, oh, I want one of them. Do you know who buys them? Right, come on, answers. Who would buy that? Grandma. Grandma. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Grandma. And you know something? I've had grandmas and granddads phone me up every year, every 12 months. Got another one. Mm-hmm. And I can't have names on here, you know. And, they, and, they, and they, they, it's once, what, once you've fished a grandmother or a grandfather, the, they have, every child coming next has to have one. So some people have got a dozen of them. Oh, no, no. But what I did, I made a bloody bad mistake at first. I says, didn't come in and say, I want one. I said, no, you can have one. And now I made the mistake of saying, when you want it. Oh, for a birthday. You know, when's that? September the 12th. Well, it's August the 4th. I mean, all right, all right. so I've got to work to do it against my nature, my time, against time. What I've learned after a year or two of that, that I only make them in the, the, for Christmas. Therefore, I bought myself November and December inside work. Workshop work with a wood burner, not one of teach snow. Might want to teach snow cutting, but really I wouldn't have start cutting until January the 1st. Oh, Boxing Day is a good day. Because <coughs> you sold all your chairs by Christmas Eve. <coughs> and then you've got a lot of money then. And then you can go, but then you can concentrate because I mean, Christmas Eve, Christmas, December 23rd, I'd still be waxing these things for delivery at the lack of a fat cat Santa's health. <laughs> <laughs> but to get them all to be sold all at once at Christmas was better for me than, you know, the people telling me when they wanted them and it worked that way. I still got quite a lot of these unfinished. Because what the thing is, they, they, they're made out of ash. Completely out of ash, apart from the seat, which is elm, and it can't be anything else. No other timber could stand all them holes in it. Ash, you cannot split it. All that's all intermingled, you can't put the axe on it and bang it. If you see a piece of wood with an axe head stuck in it, and you can't come out, it's elm. So it both like here, they stop making it something in the now. You know, like the Dutch Elm disease in the 60s. Big, you know, they want big chairs, like captain's chairs, and they're all like one seat, one big piece. And I never, I've got a few planks that are big enough for big union chairs, but I did have tons of them that were only this wide. So I've made a template of this pattern out of perspex. So I can see through it, and then I put holes in it, all where these holes are. So when I get the plank, I put the perspex pattern on to shape and all the holes, and get my bread oil and prick, prick, the, um, prick, prick through the perspex to where all the holes are. So that, that template has saved me all that marking out, and it saved me, you know, and then you just do another. And you, you, you just sleep doing them so quick. Whereas they made them, they made, they made pretty good money for me then. And I put them up every year, they went up in money. <laughs> and you know, see what I could squeeze out of them. <laughs> mm, I, I wouldn't like make them now for that money anyway. But that got me through November, December. And give, you know, you need a lot of money at Christmas when you've got kids. I've got mortgages on them for the life and that, and vans and everything. You have to get chilling. And, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I've always been employable by others, really. So you have to do it yourself, don't you? Innit? Not